There we are. Rolling that, I mean the left foot, the inner arch. And then we lean out and get the outer arch. Good. And then I go into the middle. So yeah, guys, remember as, the, as summer kicks in, I try to spend more time with my family before they forget about me. <laughs> and you know, some people are like, well, you, you canceled that class. Is there a makeup class? <laughs> no, there's no makeup classes. That's why we record it. You can okay. watch recordings. Okay. All right, let's come to the floor into the calves. You know, when I would train other clients and some people be like, hey, I still have five minutes on my session, you know? And I'm like, well, um, can you show me one push up now? And they go, Ugh. I'm like, there's no more session. You can't even do a push up. You're done. Bye. <laughs> right? It's not about time, it's about quality. Right, you guys? <laughs> so I'm rolling through the middle of my calf so I don't get cramps, blood clots edema, neuropathy. Turn the leg out and relax the toes. Ah, good. Perfect. And then we turn the leg in and get the inner calf. Good. Just like, just like that. All right, all right. Ah. Shake out your hands and wrists. Isn't this like the perfect spot? <laughs> Cross the left leg. And I'm rolling right through the middle of my left calf. Just like that. Good. Here we are. Then I'm turning the left toe out, getting the outer aspect of the left calf. Remember guys, it's not about doing it for a long time in one session. It's about being consistent and having this process frequently happen, right? Frequency, not duration. Turn the leg in and get the inner calf. There you go. And we're, we're doing what? You're pushing old inflammatory waste out of your body, okay? Come out, and we're going to move into the outside of the lower leg. So stack your leg, lift your body up. And just like that, I'm getting the fibularis muscles. These muscles travel down the side of the leg, wraps around the outer ankle, and then attaches at the bottom of the foot right near the big toe. Good. <laughs> Rotate forward into the tibialis. This is for shin splints and hammer toes, right? Shin splints and hammer toes. Like pork chops and applesauce. Remember that? Hammer, is hammer toes uh, like the bunion? A bunion is when your toe gets crooked because the tissue grows out from here. That's my problem. Is when the toe is all bent backwards and yeah. straighten out. Okay, switch to your other leg and stack it, lift it, and go back and forth. Hey, John Olson. Hey, we got a cold today, but I figure I better do this too. Yep, good job. You're making the smart decision still. All right, and rotate to the front. Again, we don't want shin splints. I need to make sure I keep the flow to the foot and ankle happening. Because again, um, what happens when you get a surgery down there? Is it fixed or is it altered forever? Good. Shake that off. And let's move around and check in with those ankles. Hopefully they're moving better. Hey, Bev, how much to rent this piece of land? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, our price is out, so how much is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if for whatever reason you find me here on uh, Friday mornings, just ignore me. 
hamstring. I got three muscles in the back. Put your left foot on the ground and lean out. And Bonnie, do you like my white blanket with contrasting colors? <laughs> That's for you. So I'm rolling the outer hamstring. It's called the biceps femoris. When these muscles get tight, it can not just cause you to not be able to straighten out your leg, but it can cause pain in your low back. Okay. So angle it in and get the other two hamstring muscles here. Just like that, you guys. Perfect. Good. Yeah, I had the opportunity yesterday. I rolled out someone who, remember three years ago, the tow truck crashed into all those cars in the poly? Well, I rolled out the guy who got the traumatic brain injury from that accident. Mm -hmm. And he said, his wife said, we've done everything, craniosacral, physical therapy, all that stuff. And you know what he said? He has a little bit of impaired speech, but he said, all those other things, I never felt S-H-I-T. Oh. He goes, I, this thing, I feel really good. So I'll be seeing him once a week in Haleiwa. Shake out your hands and wrists. Let's go to the other leg. Your right foot's on the ground. So you're using your foot and your hands to push your body forward and back. Yeah. Good. Perfect. From here, if you want to put more weight, you cross that leg over. And you can go a little slower and get in there a little deeper, right? Good. Then we turn the leg in and get the other two hamstring muscles here. Ah. So what this also helps prevent is a thing we call a Baker's cyst. It's a fluid-filled sac behind your knee. When you are stiff, you develop cysts. You free it up, guess what? Your body will resolve it by itself. Okay, I've already seen it happen. All right, ah, shake it off. Drink a little more water. We're going to put the roller in a lengthwise orientation and roll the inner thigh. I got five muscles there. So I'll give you a side view. You're on the roller. You're using your back foot to lift your weight up, tilt your ankle. And slide all the way up, all the way back, all the way up, all the way back. Just like that, you guys. Good. And high up in the hip are the inguinal lymph nodes. Very, very important, right? Lymphatic drainage keeps our immune system healthy. Instead of fighting, this inflammatory waste that's stuck in your body, you move it out and your immune system has less work to do. Therefore, it can fight off more of the external bacteria, viruses, etc. So go all the way up, turn into it, and then go as high as you can into your pectineus muscle. There you go. Just like that. Okay. Perfect. All right, switch to the left side. Right in there, lift your body, tilt your ankle, and go all the way up. Remember you guys, the other reason this activity is better than getting advice from your doctor in most cases is why? Because we're addressing the whole body, not just the right shoulder or the left knee, the whole body, helps the whole body. True or false? True. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, good. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh. <laughs> Turn it in. Go oh, right into that pectineous muscle that goes from, again from the pubic bone to the femur. Oh, the way up. Good. And just like that, we're moving into our quads. So more water, more water, more water, more water. A lot of people can't handle the 
pain, you know, because it you have to have a certain amount of pain tolerance to roll because it hurts so much at first. No, I disagree. It, what they need is an education to understand that that's not pain. That's tension. And the more you roll, the less tension you harbor. Therefore, with time, it gets better. They just got to get over it. We call it getting over the hump. Break through what you thought you knew and let go of old conventions, right? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Anthony. Yeah. I have to say thank you to John Olsen. Let's hear it. Thank you, John Olsen. My, I eat oatmeal every day after your recommendation. <laughs> and my cholesterol went down 20 points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my doctor asked me yesterday, what are you doing? I said, oh, there's this guy. He told me, he told me to eat oatmeal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I have to thank you today. And I usually put raisins. I usually put raisins with it, uh, oh. and or uh, dried cherries. Oh, we put blueberries. <laughs> yeah, I could do that too. Yeah. 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 So out. And also nutritional <laughs> use. <laughs> and one more thing is, is the uh, coconut oil. About a tablespoon oh. of coconut oil. Oh no, That's coconut good, oil. Good for the brain. <laughs> no, that has saturated fat. I yeah. wouldn't do that. But your brain needs fat. Your brain is not fat. <laughs> not that kind of fat. Rich. That causes yeah, no. yeah, Coconut oil is, is the, the right thing to use. <laughs> not other no. Kind. No. Let's, let's have that conversation elsewhere, guys. Okay. Remember, my word is the final word. Yes. <laughs> Going through the middle. Okay. And down. Uh, Oh. There you go. I'm you on my left one. You should still relax. Uh, I know. You're doing a quad. See, we're multitasking. Lean out to the outer aspect. Okay. Good. Mm. There you go. Perfect. Ah, good. There you go. All right, and turn your left toe away. And while we're on the subject of cholesterol, yes, um, statin drugs actually eat the fatty sheath around your nerves. That's why people who take statins for too long complain of muscle stiffness, muscle pain, and muscle weakness. But the doctor says, hey, we lowered that number but they never look at you. We lower the number, you're doing a good job. Well, no, you eat the right foods and oatmeal is the one. Oatmeal says, hey, you, low density lipoprotein, get on, I'm taking you out of the body. And that's what happens. It attaches to the LDLs and it pulls it. And when you go to the bathroom, guess what? My cholesterol, that's what happens. All right, guys, shake it off. Drink a little more water. We're going to move into your glutes after that. So you're going to put your butt on the roller, your elbow on the ground, cross the right foot over the left knee, hold your ankle. And you're going to get in there like that. Yeah, you guys, there's a lot of uh, wives' tales out there. One of them is, oh, Never drink cold water. Um, okay, that's dumb. Well, because the cold water will make the fat clump up in your body. Okay, that's really dumb. <sighs> Number two, my other client yesterday, her doctor said, oh, don't drink anything after you eat dinner. She's in her 70s. You need to drink water. The, the doctor is young and doesn't even know what she's talking about. <laughs> Give me a break. Don't drink water after you eat dinner. Are you kidding me? Lean out a little bit more. You drink water whenever you please. And you're still not getting enough, I guarantee you. <laughs> All right, now pull the knee down and lean out. 
and you get the gluteus medius and minimus. Remember, your fascia holds four gallons of water. Your whole body is comprised of about 12 gallons of water. Okay, 12 gallons of water per person. So trust me, unless you're drinking two gallons in the one hour sitting, which then you'll die because you dilute your electrolytes, then yeah. Switch sides on your left elbow, cross the left foot. Ah, yes, right in there. Good. Yeah, right now I'm sitting under an avocado tree with all the fruits on it. And if I look across the yard, there's a mango tree with all of its fruits. I'm in, I think I'm in the Garden of Eden. Lean out. Good. Oh, I just need a snake to come out of the tree now. <laughs> okay. From here, you guys, I'm on the sit bones, right? Left and right. So what we're going to do is lift your butt up there. Feet in front, hands behind. And just tilt to one side so I can roll right over that crunchy meeting point where the glutes and the hamstrings share an attachment on your pelvis. That attachment is called the ischial tuberosity. And yes, people get tendonitis on the butt right here. Okay, lean to the other side, just like that, <laughs> good. And there you go, you're finding all the other crunchy spots, okay, good. Now, finally, wait, right where your akala is, you move forward into the pelvic floor. Do not hit your tailbone, all right? That'll not be fun. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Okay, you guys, a little more water. And then we're gonna move into the upper, uh, the upper torso. So we're gonna move into the diaphragm and then the lower abdominal space. This helps with the breathing, digestion, lymphatic drainage, the whole thing. So you're on your back, take the edge under the left rib cage. The other end is on your right knee. You exhale, then you roll it towards your midline right by your sternum. And as you go back and forth, try to get in there just a little deeper. On the left side is our stomach, spleen, and pancreas, and of course your left kidney. So I need to get in there and keep that fascia freely flowing. Ah, good. Switch to the right side. That's where the liver, gallbladder, and of course, right kidney are. Exhale. Shh. Get in there again. Just like that. Good. That's what we want to do, right? Taking care of business every day. Perfect. Ah. Next is what? We're gonna roll beneath our belly button. So if this is your belly button, the edge of the roller is under the belly button. Lie down, bring your left knee up. So the right hip just slants to the floor and just exhale. Sink in there. And now I'm crawling forward and back. Ah, right. Under the belly button, down to the bladder. Under the belly button, down to the bladder. Just like that. Good. And then from here, bring your right knee up. Pull the roller to the belly button, right? And then exhale. Sink in there and roll back and forth on this side. Ah, right there. Now you're rolling the 20 foot long small intestine. You're also getting part of that five foot long large intestine. 
uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, the broad ligament, which is a big fascial sheath that goes sideways, which suspends your fallopian tubes and your uterus to the back of your thorax. Okay? Keep those ligaments hydrated and your uterus stays up and you avoid prolapse, right? Okay, very nice. Sit on up and let's take a big deep breath through your nose first. Mm-hmm, what a nice feeling. And yes, even that gentleman who was in the car wreck, okay, he's in a wheelchair. I put him on the ground. I said, take a breath. He stopped here. I rolled it out for him. He said, take a breath. He went up here. And with people who are uh, with hemiparesis or brain injuries, they have a tendency of getting pneumonia because they don't move. You understand what we're doing? Of course you do, okay? Upper back. Here's your shoulder blades, here's your spine. Three muscles in between your shoulder blades. So watch from my top view. You lie back on your nipple line, tilt 30 degrees to one side, and you pull those elbows together. And look, I can see you guys from here. I'm letting my head fall back, and you exhale back. Hips up, exhale back. Two more times, hips up, exhale back, ah, perfect. And then I can switch to my left side. I'll give you a side view from here, tilt, elbows together, use those hips, hips up, exhale back, one, two, Three, four. Remember, you guys, this isn't pain. This is future pain, not finding a residence in your body. You got me? Good. Shake it off. Drink, drink, drink. This is the best place ever. <laughs> We're gonna roll the underarm. Extend your arm out, you guys. Relax and lie back. I'm rolling the latissimus dorsi muscle. I'm getting my lymph nodes in my underarm. There you go. Just like that. And I'm also releasing the fascia around the nerves that leave the spinal column and go into the shoulder, chest, back, and arm, right? Now, bye from here. Put your foot flat, lift your hip up. You're leaning back still, and I'm rolling up and down, just a couple of inches down my lats. And I can feel three of the four rotator cuff muscles too. That's right. This is how we stay out of the hospital. Switch arms. And as you lie down, relax your neck back and go forward ah, just like that wow <clears throat> perfect two more times here Good. Uh, all right and then what we're gonna do next again put your foot flat lift your hip up you're rolling the rotator cuff muscles and some of that latissimus dorsi. Perfect job, you guys. Ah, shake it off and move your arm around just like that. So Mimi, look, we're matching today. <laughs> All right, your chest is next. Take the edge of the roller under your collarbone so find that clavicle and palpate underneath it take the edge pull the bottom away the opposite hand is digging digging the edge under the collarbone there we go and again you should be feeling that into your neck i feel that go all the way up into my ear as well that's it perfect 
then we go into the front, you pull it in, push in, right? You're pulling that roller into that pec minor muscle. Pull it in and roll it down and you'll feel it go boink, doink, doink, right? Just keep working everything. Good. And from here, we switch over to the other side, pull the bottom away, elbow up and push on down just like that. Good. That's it. Now into the chest we go on the side. So you guys, I'm looking at my battery time on my computer. I'm at 40%. We're gonna trudge on forward and we're gonna make it before the battery runs out. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And then roll down the sternum and your mammary glands and mammary ducts. Yeah, I, I couldn't pass. Bev said, hey, use my backyard. So I said, okay, I couldn't pass on this place. It's perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna live right here. Okay, we got all the chest into your shoulder. Next, tuck your arm and roll back and forth on that deltoid. So here I am and I'm rolling all the way to the front, all the way to the back, right? This is to keep your rotator cuff tendons from drying up and breaking for no reason. It's like this leaf, right? If it's dry, you hear all that? And look, look at the fragments of leaf now. That's your rotator cuff if you don't roll. <laughs> all right, switch sides. What a great analogy. With the, the, the supplies are right here. <laughs> Tuck and roll forward and back again. That's it, you guys. <sighs> Perfect. Good. Two more times. There we go. And last one. Good. All right. A little more water, then we'll move into your tricep. So uh, your arm is going to be on the roller right above the elbow. Turn your thumb away and get in there, rolling the back of the arm, the tricep. And you just rotate the arm every so often to get all the muscles of that area. Good. Perfect. And here, I'm going to switch to the other side. And remember, these are smaller muscles. They don't need a full minute. Again, I remind you, it's the frequency of hitting everything, not the duration of trying to work on one thing. Frequency is better. Okay, just rotate that arm a few eight millimeters each time and you find all the tender parts that you need to find. Good. Ah, easy. Now we're on the bicep. Rotate that arm so I can get the top of the bicep. The arm is in a vertical position. So the arm you're using to push down needs to be upright, not down here. And I get the middle, right in there. I can find all those little pieces. I get the long head on the outside. So you put the roller on the ground outside the arm, just like that. And then on the inside, is the short head. Good. All right, you guys, switch arms. We are now 35% battery. I'm watching closely. We're going to make it. Get that bicep. No problem. One minute per percent. Well, I think this one is going like 3% per minute because it was just at 40 and it's at 35 already. It's okay. 
because I'm because we have the Wi-Fi and the Zoom and all that stuff broadcasting. Mm -hmm. ah, good, you guys. Long head, middle, short head. Got it. Perfect. Forearm extensors. Take a real quick drink. Now I'm going into the extensors. I'm on my knees. I lean all the way. You make sure that thumb is pointing to the floor and you gotta rotate your hip and spine and shoulders along with your wrist and arm. Otherwise, you might twist something. We're not trying to hurt you. Just move along with the body all the way out there, all the way to the wrist. Good. Perfect. Other side, lean out and press. And next time I'll bring a 50 foot extension cord. And a charger. And a charger. Well, that's what the extension cord would do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good, all the way out. And I can feel that all the way into my fingers, right? That's good. This is to get rid of trigger finger and tennis elbow. So next, now that my fingers feel nice and free, I move into the forearm flexors to get the wrist nice and loose. So palm down, dig under there. Just like that, get in there. You're freeing up the wrist flexors. This also, when you put the edge in between the bones, this helps keep the nerve that goes in the carpal tunnel, the median nerve. It helps keep the fascia around it nice and hydrated and slippery. So you don't have friction around the nerve, especially as it travels through the carpal tunnel. This is how we keep carpal tunnel syndrome out of your life, okay? Next, your palms all through the palm. So use the edge. And just like our feet this morning, what happens? You feel that gritty stuff. I'm just doing my due diligence, as we say, All right? Good, perfect. Hands are next, top of the hand. Here we go. That's it. And yes, you guys, my new client with the traumatic brain injury, he was like this, and I said, make a fist, and he said, it feels stronger. So if, his, if, his, if one side is a lot stronger because the other side is like this, right? Well, guess what? If his hand that he can use more can function better, then he can stabilize himself more when he's trying to learn how to walk again. Do you see where I'm going with that? I guarantee you he will be taking steps with me. I guarantee you. Top of the foot. <laughs> And get down there. Good. Now, his wife is a former traumatic uh, trauma nurse for the U.S. Army. Good. Said, yeah, we would give him 800 milligrams of Motrin every four hours. So guess what? Eight times six is 4,800 milligrams a day. Bye-bye, <laughs> organs, stomach, kidneys, liver. Bye-bye. Okay, hey, we made it to the neck. I'm at 29, you see it's going quick, but we're gonna win. So extend your arm out, slide it in, bring your hip and spine into it. Pull your head down and just like that, uh, you can relax, stay, keep the pressure on that tender spot that you find. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Underneath it are all the nerves that leave the brain before they go into your face, eyes, ears, nose, throat, tongue, and all of your organs too. Vagus nerve goes through here as well. Good. And then chin up and rotate into the front gently. And you might have to readjust it a little higher Relax your jaw. Good. 
There you go. And now I'm going to the other side right away. Expand the arm, slide it in, pull the head down, lead into it. Oh yes, exactly what I wanted right there. There you go. We use this to get rid of vertigo. Tonight it spells palsy, night vision blindness. This even helps get the floaties out of your body, the floaties in your eyeball. All right, oh, good. Chin up and go to the front. You know, the other thing, the wife was watching me roll out her husband and she goes, look, I see his eyes are, I see tears. His eyes are watering. Normally his eyes are so dry because his lacrimal glands is like, does this help with that? I'm like, yeah. So yeah, you'll see. Chin up, go to the front. Ah, perfect. There you go, you guys. And then the final piece, right? Our suboccipitals. So you're going to place the roller under that bump here, hold it on each side, pull your chin away from your chest and you're turning left to right. Right where you're rolling, you guys, are the eight muscles known as the suboccipitals. These muscles meet in the middle. The two of those muscles become the fascia of your brain. So you're literally accessing the interior of your skull, helping improve blood to the brain, which pushes old inflammatory waste out, which prevents the plaques linked to Alzheimer's and dementia from forming in the vessels of your brain. <sighs> and finally, go over to your cervical spine tilt of about 45 degrees and I like to cross my arms, pull the chin back, turn to the right and meet in the center, right on the side. You feel all that crunchy tissue of the spinal muscles as they connect to the lateral processes of your cervical spine. All right, other side, chin back. Uh, and center. Good. Perfect. And then from here, just relax for a second. I'm looking to get some sun on my feet, get some vitamin D going here. <laughs> <laughs> Take a breath, reach up. Point your toes away and just stretch out. Ah. And just like that, you guys just gave me a great new idea. I think I'll find all kinds of destinations to set up my little broadcasting shop. Maybe I'll do it at the top of a of, of Coco Crater one day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good job. And it's, we got 22% left. Great job. Bye. Bye.